There have been fresh protests in Georgia as lawmakers advanced a law critics say restricts basic freedoms and could derail the country's hopes of joining the European Union. Thousands voiced their anger outside parliament in the capital overnight. The law would require groups that receive more than 20% of their funding from abroad to register as so-called agents of foreign influence. The legislation must pass two more readings before becoming law. And I'm now pleased to welcome Georgia's president, Salome Zurabishvili. She's an opponent of the law and plans to veto it. Madam President, good to have you on DW. Now, the Georgian government claims this law is all about transparency. You say that's a lie. In your opinion, what's the government trying to do here? Well, I don't say, first of all, it's uh, all the concerned members of the society, the NGOs, uh, the media, uh, and at large the population that protests uh, this law uh, because it's a copy of the law edicted by Putin some years ago and that he has been enforcing uh, gradually and uh, completely recently and that is designed to limit the activities uh, of the non-governmental organization, to limit the freedom of the media, to limit the activity of the international organizations that are present in Georgia since our independence, that have been funding and supporting our institutions, our progress uh, towards democracy, uh, and in general, our path towards European and Euro-Atlantic integration. Mm -hmm. So this law is criticized by everyone, and it's uh, criticized by our European partners, uh, by our American partners uh, that say that this will be an obstacle uh, to the European path of Georgia when we are expecting by the end of the year to get the possibility to open negotiations uh, for Georgia's entry into the European Union. So it's a very important step uh, and it's not surprising uh, that Russia would be putting pressure to, and obstacles in front uh, of this pass. Yeah. And that's what Let's we're seeing today. Let's talk about Russia's today. influence there. So and sorry to jump in there, but you've been warning that this law is yeah. a hybrid strategy by Russia to avoid Georgia's EU membership. What is the Kremlin's influence over the current government? Well, that's what we see through this law and uh, through these decisions. And there are a number of other decisions uh, that have been taken in the recent months uh, and that all go very directly against uh, the recommendations that have been put forward by the European partners for allowing us to uh, get to the result at the end of the year. So the objective picture that uh, we see through that is that the uh, Georgian government today is presenting laws, is taking steps and measures that serve only uh, one, and that is Russia, and that deserves uh, our pass to the European Union. But, Madam President, polls suggest an overwhelming majority of Georgian citizens wants to see the country move closer to the West and join the EU. Why, then, would the elected government by those same people take cues from the Kremlin? Well, uh, first of all, it's true that 80% uh, of the population, and that has been a constant throughout uh, these uh, three decades since our independence, uh, is supporting uh, the European integration, is supporting the Euro-Atlantic integration. And that has been very clear, and that has been the policy of uh, all the governments uh, in Georgia up to now, including uh, the current uh, government that was the one to introduce in the constitution uh, a specific uh, amendment that uh, was inscribing the EU Atlantic integration as one of our main priorities that we should all serve. Something is happening, something has happened that has changed this dedication to the European past and very clearly all the measures that have been taken recently, all the rhetoric uh, that is now heard from the authorities is one uh, that is much closer to Russia than it is to our European partners. Hence, Why is that? My you, concern, you have an ear to the ground. You're right there. What, what, what caused this turn? Well, probably a reactivation of uh, Russian strategy. Here, in our case, it's a hybrid strategy 
probably some pressures on the members of the governments, on Mr. Libanishvili and others. Uh, it's very difficult to know what and how it happens, but uh, it's clear that this is a result uh, of Russia's interest and Russia's strategy. You're planning on vetoing the bill, but your veto is expected to be overruled in Parliament. Is there then anything that can stop this bill from passing? Well, there is one thing that can stop or reverse this bill and other bills that cannot enter here in the detail of the bills that have been taken recently. Uh, but there is only one thing that can reverse it. It's the mobilization of the population and that mobilization translated into votes in October of this year. And that will be the main test uh, proud of the population for Georgia and for its European past. Uh, you have, however, though, uh, appealed for these developments in Georgia to be discussed at the European Council. What exactly do you expect them to do? Well, to maintain and to reiterate the position. I mean, we cannot uh, uh, completely forego the idea that the government, uh, which is under pressures from Russia, can also receive the pressures from our European partners and maybe listen to them. Uh, and they have different measures at their hand. Uh, but what is important is for the Georgian population to uh, feel that it is supported, that it is understood in its desire of joining the European Union and that it is supported. So that's uh, the reiterance. And we have had, for instance, nine uh, statements from our American uh, partners, from the State Department, and we have had a number of statements from the European Union. And that is what uh, brings uh, uh, hope to the Georgian population that despite everything, we'll continue our path towards the European Union. You mentioned it uh, before, it's an election year in Georgia. So do you think this crisis could actually play into the hands of more Western-oriented forces? I think that it's, yes, because the election uh, will be, in fact, a form of uh, referendum. It will be for Europe or for Russia or not Europe, at least. Uh, so that is a very clear question that is put to the population, that is put to our diaspora, uh, that was not so active until now in the elections because they felt that it was this or that party. Now it's a much more existential question that will be asked to them. And the use that we have seen in the demonstrations of these last three days which has become extremely active, will certainly be active in the elections. And for them to the question is, what future for us in Georgia? What European future for our country? We really appreciate your time, Madam President. But before I let you go, I'd like to ask you about something else as well. Could you give us an update on the situation of Georgia's ex-president, Mikhail Saakashvili, who's been in prison since 2021? Well, he's still in prison and that probably won't uh, change. Uh, he is responsible for also the same thing as what is happening to us today, which was uh, going towards an authoritarian regime at the end of uh, his uh, mandate. And we're seeing today Georgian Dream taking the same direction of an authoritarian regime. And that is something that the Georgian population and the democratic forces will probably not accept from any coming government either. That was Salome Zorabishvili, the president of Georgia. Madam President, thank you so much for joining DW today. Thank you.